with Matt Barnes right now. Hey, Matt, it's great to have you, man. How you doing? I'm well, I'm well. Thanks for having me, fellas. Yeah, man, absolutely. What stood out at the Warriors Summer League yesterday? Um, The youth, I, I, I like the draft pick. Uh, I, I don't want to butcher his name. How do you say his name? Pajemski. Pajemski. Pajemski, yeah, I, I think he played well. Um, game one, I don't think he necessarily looked to score as much, but he had an all-around game, I think 12-6-6. Six, and six. Last night, he was a lot more aggressive on the offensive end, but I just like the pace, and he does a little bit of everything. I like his, he's a hard-nosed player, high basketball IQ, and I definitely think in a few years he's going to really be able to, uh, you know, help this Warrior team. Do you take what you see from Summer League with a little bit of a grain of salt, knowing that it's mostly young players against young guys, kind of almost an AAU alumni tournament feel? Yeah, I don't necessarily look at numbers. I just look at movements and, 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 and IQ and, and ability to get to spots and, and, and the, the ability to read re- and react. I think sometimes numbers can be deceiving because we all know 95% of those guys in Summer League won't be on an NBA roster next year, which is unfortunate. Um, so, again, sometimes numbers can be deceiving. So you just look at the way someone can play. I think you can tell if someone can play regardless of the level of competition um, if you really know the game. Matt, um, I know you played with Chris Paul for a number of years with uh, with the Clippers. So curious uh, on your thoughts from a number of angles with regard to that acquisition. Start with this, though. What kind of a teammate is he, and how will it fit into a very established veteran locker room? Uh, I think, first of all, Chris is a great teammate, great basketball mind. I think Chris sometimes got a bad rap because I, I look at Chris as a, a throwback kind of point guard and no nonsense. He's not necessarily a sugar coater. He's going to give it to you straight with no chaser. And on those Clipper teams, we had some guys that couldn't handle that. You know, we had some younger guys that just couldn't handle the truth sometimes. And sometimes I would have to be the bridge to say, hey, this is what Chris is trying to say. But, um, love him, would go to war with him every single day, and I think he understands the situation he's walking into. Um, obviously, he's walking into a, uh, a, a, a dynasty team with its own set of leaders and in, in its own ways, and I think Chris is a great enough player and has a sharp enough mind to adapt and, and fit in smoothly with this Warrior squad. You've got a guy who's all straight, no chaser in CP3, and also Draymond, who is cut from the same cloth, Can these two get along? Can Chris Paul and Draymond Green, a couple of alphas, veterans in this league, can they coexist on a Warrior team? Absolutely. I think sometimes you may think you don't like someone because of the tenacity or the way they play. Or, But I look at Draymond and CP uh, uh, very similar as far as leaders. Obviously, uh, Draymond is a little bit more outspoken, but at the end of the day, they both want what's best for the team. And I know that for a fact. That's what CP wants. I mean, he's you know, he's on the back nine of his career, and I think he's looking to get into a situation that, that best fits him, that he can still, you know, demonstrate uh, what he can do. So I definitely feel like, you know, I've heard Draymond in the past that he's not a fan of CP or whatever, whatever, but I've heard other guys say that about other guys until they actually played with him, and then they ended up getting along well. So I have no doubt that, you know, CP and Draymond will be just fine. Matt, when he was acquired, uh, I, the assumption by the Warrior fan base is, Okay, he'll come off the bench and run the second unit. He's never come off the bench in his life. You think he'd be okay with that? I think at this point, Chris is willing to to, to do what needs to be done. Uh, there's never necessarily been an ego with Chris. Um, I think his 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 resume speaks for itself. And again, he un- understands the, the the situation he's going into and 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 what this current team has accomplished and. And, and, and the standards they've set. So whether it's starting, whether it's coming off the bench, I really still feel that CP can add some value to this Warrior team. Draymond mentioned that uh, CP3 has done so much for DeAndre Ayton and others in terms of making them better, and now he's going to have Jonathan Kaminga and Moses Moody and a couple of drafted players, Podjemski, who you've seen. How does Chris Paul go about making younger players better? He just makes the game so easy. I mean, you start with Tyson Chandler, who he helped, uh, you know, turn into a, the defensive monster and the lob threat he was. And then you look at what DeAndre Jordan was able to accomplish uh, with Chris Paul with the Clippers. Uh, he helped out uh, Capella in Houston. Um, so everywhere Chris goes, he makes those teams better. And that's not just me saying that because he's my neighbor and our kids are best friends. Uh, you look at the records of the teams he goes to, and they, they get better every time he 
makes a pit stop somewhere. So uh, he just makes the game simple. Uh, he's a great passer, a, a great reader of the floor, a great surveyor of the floor, and he's never played with shooting like he has in Stephen Clay. And then maybe another power forward with the the passing IQ and the ability. I think obviously Blake Griffin was a great passer and a playmaker, but I think Draymond is, you know, a, a, a better playmaker and a passer. So Chris plays well with guys that know the game, think the game, and don't just play the game. The guys that see the game, and that's what you know this core group does. Matt, it sounds like you think this acquisition by the Warriors is really, really going to work. I think it's a solid pickup. I mean, obviously, you know, we all know it's no secret that, you know, Chris has unfortunately been injury prone um, in his career in some of the biggest moments. Um, he's a little older. I think he's 38 years old now. So I'm not expecting Lob City CP. Uh, you look at Chris's numbers last year, 14 and 9, I think, in about 32 minutes a game. I don't see him playing a. I mean, I think Chris's sweet spot with minutes this year is going to be in that 25 to 28 range, maybe 30. Uh, you know, I wonder, do they play him back-to-backs and kind of just understand you need him for the long haul? Um, but I do think that he's going to bring a, a new dimension to this team. I mean, as great as Steph Curry has been and, and one of the greatest point guards, if not the greatest point guard ever, uh, when it comes to scoring the basketball, Chris is that on the passing side of the game. And I just really think, again, he's never played with guys that can shoot the ball and really think the game like this Warrior Ball Club does. Is Chris dogged by the label or the tab of being one of the best players to never have won a championship? Uh, probably. You know, and, and, and there's a, a lot of great players that, that, that never won a championship, but I don't think that takes away from their greatness. They just were unlucky. You know what I mean? There's a lot of guys that have won championships that weren't half the players that some of these great players that never won were. Um, obviously, you know, a lot of responsibility comes when you're a franchise-type player, and Chris has been that a majority of his career. Um, but I'm, I definitely know it's something that's on his bucket list. And, 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 again, as I said earlier, you know, to put it in golf terms, that Chris is definitely on the back nine. He's probably on, you know, hole seven, <laughs> you know, so – or, excuse me, 17. Mm. So he doesn't have much time left. And, again, I think he's going to do whatever he can to, to fit in and, whatever he has left in the tank to life for this Golden State team. Uh, Matt Barnes with us here, Willard and Dibbs, 95-7 the game. Matt, you said in the broadcast yesterday that the Warriors had kicked the tires on Alex Len in free agency, which led to a comment about their their, their front line and, and feeling like they need to be bigger. Would love to hear you expand on that. Do you feel like the front court that they've got right now is, is not enough? I, yeah, I don't feel like it's enough. Um, as much as I love Draymond and as, as great as he's been um, during this run, it's weird that the, you know the size is back in the game. And you know, I, I think this is a copycat league. And for the last ten years, the world has been trying to catch copy Golden State and, and do what Golden State does. And 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 the recipe for success was you know to be able to shoot the three ball. I think that's obviously the three ball is still a, a big part of the game. But you look at and the Anthony Davises now and, and, and the Jokic's and, and how big Denver's front line is, Draymond can't do all that by himself. As great as he is, he'll be a first time Hall of Famer. He's going to need some help. I think the one move that I look back on that I just really didn't agree, and then obviously I'm, you know, you're never going to question as many great moves as that front office has made. I think they gave up on Wiseman too fast. I think Wiseman could have really been something, I think, with just <clears throat> more time under his belt. You look at him, he didn't play a ton in high school. <clears throat> he didn't play a ton at Memphis. He gets hurt his first year. So, you know, you go into year two or three, I'm not sure what year he got traded on, but I just think there was so much potential still with him. Uh, Long, skilled, block shot, rim runner, um, someone that I really think could have developed. I think if you would have had a Wiseman with Chris Paul, you would have seen a whole new type of player. Um, So I say all that to say I definitely feel like they need more depth. Um, But with, you know, the restrictions with, you know, the salary cap and – not much flexibility, you know, they're going to have to obviously get a vet minimum big, and I don't really know what guys are on the market um, right now in that market that they can really help a team. Um, so what I'm looking for is I think this has to be a big year for Jonathan Kaminga. Um, I think it's, it's time for him to step up. Um, he shows flashes of, oh, my God, here and there, and then he shows inconsistency, and that's just signs of a young player. But everything I've heard, it is not necessarily his skill set. I think it's what I've heard, it's between his ears. Um, Come year three, 
you know, it, it's time to really show what he can do because, you know, his, his length, his size, his athletic ability is something that this Warrior team doesn't have. And it's something that, 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 that he possesses. And um, I would really like to see him make that jump this year. And I think having, you know, obviously guys like Draymond on him and Steph and Clay, but then CP, a guy that will know how to get him the ball in the right spots, um, you know, might be able to light that fire or turn on that light for him. They need that leap, uh, that third-year leap, uh, without a doubt. One more, Matt, before we let you go. What do you make of the Dame Lillard situation, him wanting out of Portland after 11 quality years? Uh, I'm not mad at it. Uh, you know, I'm close with KG now. We do some work together on the Showtime uh, platform. And, you know, when you just sit and listen and talk to him and, and listen to how many great years he had in Minnesota that, that, that led nowhere, and you hear him say, man, I wish I would have done it sooner. Um, all I hope now is that Dame Linden lands in a situation that is, is, is beneficial. You know, I hope that, you know, through his loyalty, and, and loyalty doesn't mean much in this game anymore um, because there isn't much of it, that Portland would really try to facilitate something to, 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 to help him get to where he needs to land. Um, although it is a business, and you know Portland's going to need stuff in return and not just give him away for free. I hope that he's just able to get to a spot where he can be happy at and, and have a chance to compete um, in the playoffs and, and possibly a championship. So I would love to see Dame go somewhere where he wants. You know, from all signs, you're here in Miami. Um, if they can keep their core together and add a Damian Lillard, um, although I think Miami kind of shocked everyone coming out of the East, um, I think you add a Damian Lillard to that roster, um, and that really bolsters your roster. So I'm wishing <clears throat> nothing but the best for Dame. He's, you know, a great basketball player, but even a better person, and that doesn't come around too often. So. You know, I'll definitely be keeping a close eye on his situation and, and, and hoping uh, that he lands in, in a good situation because he deserves that. Matt, we really appreciate your time, man. Thank you so much for coming on. All right, guys. Have a good day. Okay, there he goes. Matt Barnes right here on uh, Willard and